Hi everyone. It is January 25, 2019. Shutdown agreement reached. Announcement set for 1.30 p.m. Government to reopen temporarily. No wall funds. Trump live. Roger Stone charged on seven counts in Mueller probe. The mess. The mess of the United States. It's so obvious. The American people are a mess. Washington, D.C. is a mess. Our politicians are criminals. What a mess. And Trump supporters, yay. See, he is protecting the American people. He is carving out billions from departments like the Pentagon and the Department of Homeland Security to build that wall, which will be, what, a hundred miles? Another hundred miles? This wall has been used, if you just look back, do a little bit of research, the history of the wall, it has been used as a, uh, a card thrown at the American people by presidents. Oh, I'm going to protect you. No, I'm going to protect you. No, I'm going to protect you. It's all a game. And as it goes on and on and on, this guy is doing just what every president has done before him. The evil, the psychopathic, so pathologically narcissistic is this guy, and Trump supporters can't see it. White House aides scramble to set up the Rose Garden. President Trump is expected to announce his support for a bill to temporarily reopen the government. And meanwhile, meanwhile, or should I say, at the same time, we've got this going on. Trump officially recognized Guaido as interim president and warned the Maduro regime against harming the Venezuelans calling for change. Asked by reporters if he is considering a military option, he said, We're not considering anything, but all options are on the table. Ah, so we're not considering anything, but all options are on the table. We're not considering anything. Excuse me? You're considering clearly all options, right? You know, these people say things that don't make any sense whatsoever. No sense. We're not considering anything, but all options are on the table. Wow. Okay. We've got stupid going on in this country that is, it, it's gone now to a height that makes it so obvious that it is hard to be an American because it's embarrassing. What are we doing in Venezuela? What we're focusing on today is disconnecting the illegitimate Maduro regime from the sources of its revenues. Uh, we think uh, consistent with our recognition of Juan Guaido as the constitutional interim president of Venezuela, uh, that those revenues should go to the legitimate government. It's very complicated. We're looking at a lot of uh, different things we have to do, but that's in process. Uh, we're speaking with uh, governments in this hemisphere, which have overwhelmingly recognized the new uh, constitutional government. We're talking to our colleagues in Europe and elsewhere to uh, to demonstrate uh, widespread political support. For the evil, psychopathic, unbelievably violent, gross, nut jobs in Washington, D.C., support us. I'm sorry, Trump supporters. You really need to reevaluate this support. And if you don't do that, you should be ashamed of yourselves. You're so clearly not awake. You're not about the truth. You're about your own agenda. Hey, you want that wall to be built. You don't want those illegal immigrants coming into this country. So you want that wall to be built. And just because he is playing you 
with this game about the wall. You're just believing all of the horse shit that you are getting. And I'm tired of it. I'm really tired of it. Evil. Evil. You know, we it, it's been known for a very, very, very long time, a very long time, that the CIA and other other uh, agencies, U.S. aid in particular, has been infiltrating South American countries to take them over, to control them, for a very, very long time, for decades. Guatemala, 1954. Uh, British Guiana. Cuba. Ecuador. Brazil. Peru. Dominican Republic. Uruguay. Chile, Bolivia, Argentina, Nicaragua, Honduras, Grenada, El Salvador, Haiti, Panama, Mexico, Peru, Colombia, Venezuela, Venezuela. For the last two decades, we have been trying to take over Venezuela. Let me just read you some history. This was posted May 17, 2018. Trump administration's foreign policy toward Venezuela includes supporting a boycott of Sunday's elections in Venezuela. They supported a boycott of the election before it took place in May, which I think it was May 20th, the election was called for. Um, the Trump administration hinted at the possibility of a coup and enacted harmful economic sanctions with consequences for democracy in the country beset by poverty and unrest. So, last August, last August, which means it was August 2017, President Trump casually mentioned a military option for Venezuela from his golf course in New Jersey, provoking an uproar in Latin America, but barely a peep in Washington. Similarly, Rex Tillerson, then Secretary of State, spoke favorably about a possible military ouster of Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro. Elections occur frequently in Venezuela and are, with few exceptions, considered to be competitive and transparent. On Sunday, May 20th, Maduro will be up for re-election. Polls suggest that if the turnout is high, he could be voted out of office. And if the poll, if, if the numbers were low, that he would be re-elected. The fact that coups, not elections, are the hot topic is a sad reflection of the warped direction that the mainstream discussion on Venezuela has taken. For many years now, most or much of the analysis and reporting on the oil-rich but economically floundering nation have offered a black-and-white sensationalized depiction of a complex and nuanced internal situation. In addition, there has been little serious discussion of the Trump administration's policies toward Venezuela, even as they wreak further damage to the country's economy, worsen shortages of life-saving medicines and food, and undermine peace and democracy. Maduro, often described by U.S. politicians and pundits as a dictator, was democ democratically elected in snap elections carried out a month after Chavez's death in 2013. As a presidential term lasts six years in Venezuela, his current constitutional mandate will end in early 2019. Hence the reason that Trump now, Maduro won the election in 2018, now Trump is coming out and saying, that we do not recognize Maduro as the president of Venezuela. We're recognizing this guy named Guaido, 
who wasn't even a presidential candidate. It is outrageous that this continues. It's outrageous it continues because now everything we hear from our quote-unquote leaders we know is an abject lie and we're still accepting it. Many ideologues blame socialism for Venezuela's uh, collapse. It has nothing to do with socialism. Nothing. The Trump administration's financial sanctions, more than all previous destabilization efforts, which were significant under Obama and Bush, Trump, he brought it to a new level, making it nearly impossible for the government to get out of the mess that we created. There has been scant U.S. media re reporting on the further economic damage provoked by the Trump administration's financial sanctions announced in late August, Trump's unilateral and illegal financial embargo, which cuts Venezuela off from most financial markets, has had two major consequences, both of which entail increased economic hardship for the Venezuelan people. Oh, yeah, Pence. Our vice president just came out and said, we've got to protect the Venezuelan people. Really? You're going to believe that horseshit coming out of that evil lying sack of crap? I'm so tired of all of the, 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 the evil that is committed by our country. All lies and just to watch our fellow Americans not give a shit about anything. We have hurt so many people around the world with our sanctions. The Venezuelan people. We created shortages of essential goods, including food and medicine. Um, and that made economic recovery nearly impossible since the government cannot borrow or restructure its foreign debt and in some cases even carry out normal import tra uh, transactions including for medicines. That's how much we care about the Venezuelan people. So there was an opposition leader, Henry Falcon. Um, Falcon secured strong guarantees from the country's electric, electric, um, electoral, I'm sorry, authority, ensuring transparency, voter accessibility, and vote secrecy, as in all contested prior elections since Chavez took office in 1999. Venezuela actually has elections that are um, quite fair, transparent, unlike our elections that are clearly, obviously, just a, uh, it's like absurd theater. Hey, watch all those Americans go cast their vote for some person who was already selected to get into the White House. It's so sad to see Americans be made fools of and clearly enjoy it because it is so obvious and they never do anything to change it. So, the Trump administration, and this was for the 2018 election, the Trump administration, after unsuccessfully threatening Falcon with individual financial sanctions, if he didn't give up his candidacy, supported the election boycott by more hardline opposition sectors that see Falcon, who was a Chavez ally until 2010, 
um, because they thought that Falcon could possibly win, and uh, he was a supporter of Chavez. So Falcon wouldn't be our puppet. Maduro is not our puppet. Hence the reason why Guaido has been selected by our government to be recognized as the president of Venezuela now. He was not a presidential candidate. Oh, it, it just is mind-boggling. U.S. administration even threatened sanctions targeting Venezuelan oil if the elections were held. And sources indicate that when both Falcon and the Venezuelan government requested that the UN send an international observation team, team to monitor the elections, U.S. officials intervened to ensure that no such monitoring would take place. Yeah. Well, if there was independent monitoring of the elections in Venezuela, and that uh, independent organization said, well, there was no corruption, it was fair, and Maduro has been re-elected, then how could Trump come out and say, those elections were not fair, Maduro stole the presidency, and we're not going to recognize him as president. Oh my God. It's so, uh, it's like junior high school crap that goes on, and we just believe the lies we're told. We can expect the administration to immediately denounce a fraudulent and illegitimate process and take further action that will make life even more difficult for ordinary Venezuelans, regime change in Venezuela, and ongoing U.S. policy. Trump's Venezuela policy is mostly a continuation of Obama's policy toward Venezuela, which was a continuation of Bush's policy towards Venezuela. Although the financial embargo and calls for a military coup are particularly outrageous and disdainful of international law and the norms of civilized nations, and that was Trump. The Trump sanctions build on Obama sanctions regime identifying Venezuela as an extraordinary threat to national security. Really, what's the threat? No threat. No threat. But we hear our leaders say that and we just buy it like it's, hey, true? It's about the oil. You can read more of this, what we have done to Venezuela. We have destroyed that country. We have been working so hard, so hard to take it over. And maybe Trump was put in office. Oh, you saw him, right? Suddenly we get the same old bullshit narrative. Assad used chemical weapons against his own. Trump? Well, what was it? Days in office. He doesn't wait for an investigation. He doesn't, he just comes out and accuses Assad. Waits for nothing. I'm just going to bomb Syria. It's not a surprise to me that it's Trump who, now, let's get the job done in Venezuela. Let's get that job done. Enough of this, you know, bullshitting around. Let's just take it over. Let's go call for a coup. Mike Pence, yay. Isn't this guy really, he's like a... Uh, strong Christian, right? This guy, all of these people are just so unbelievably evil. It is, wow. Since Hugo Chavez established the Bol Bolivarian, sorry, social democracy in Venezuela, a vibrant system, a model for other nations, the U.S. plotted to repress replace it with a fascist tyranny. Democratically elected and re-elected, Maduro carries the torch 
Chavez lit. Venezuela's electoral system is the world's best. Polar opposite America's money controlled process war party rule with two extremist right wing nut jobs. Venezuela is a prime target because of its world largest oil reserves. And the U.S. dark forces want big oil. They want fascist tyranny replacing social democracy in Venezuela. They're waging long-standing political, economic, financial, and sanctions, uh, sanctions war on the country, military intervention, an option if current tactics fail, previous U.S. coup attempts, attempts, um, coup d'etat attempts failed. So Mike Pence encouraged the toppling of a democratically elected or re-elected Maduro. Yeah. Are you kidding me? And we, the American people, allow this to go on and on and on. I will link below to all of these articles. These are these are just within the last two days. But I have to tell you, man, you know, there is so much information, although some of the information is um, unfortunately getting put down the memory hole, like, um, let's see if I can find it. Like this, okay, so before Guaido, uh, Juan Guaido has, he literally just stood up and announced that he was the president of, of Venezuela. Self-declared, and we're recognizing this guy. Well, he's the puppet that we have selected to be president of Venezuela. And what we say goes, right? So before he declared himself, the president, uh, he was almost immediately put into his place by the Venezuela's Supreme Court, which disavowed him as the chief of the National Assembly. So he's the former chief. The Western mass media propaganda campaign kicked into top gear and overnight became utterly unscrupulous. As a result, it is now becoming almost impossible to read any information about the Supreme Court ruling in Venezuela. Uh, you can find it on non-Western sources like the Iranian Taznin, Taznim. Venezuela's Supreme Court head uh, Moreno announced on Monday that the judges had disavowed Juan Guaido as the chief of the opposition-controlled National Assembly. RT, Venezuela's Supreme Court, has declared all acts of the country's National Assembly null and void days after the opposition-held assembly declared President Maduro's election illegitimate. Venezuela foreign minister said, you see this man who nobody knows in Venezuela. You ask in the streets, who is Juan Guaido? And nobody knows him. But he's being pushed to say that he is the new president by the United States. A day later, President Trump recognized him as the country's interim president. Wow. Um... What is the Venezuelan government like? It's like the United States government. So when you think about uh, Juan Guaido simply stating that he is the president, it's like Nancy Pelosi stating, I'm the president don't recognize Trump. Really? Um, and if other countries recognize Nancy Pelosi as your president, but not Trump, how do you think you'd feel? Do you think that there would be um, foreign interference in our government? Do you think other countries 
uh, would be interfering with our sovereignty? Of course. Ah, but we can do it, right? We can do it. So just think about Trump, who has now recognized Juan Guaido as the president. And think how other countries could do that to us. Oh, but they just don't have the same kind of violent arrogance of the Americans, so they wouldn't do it. Um, this is very, very upsetting. Very, very, very upsetting. And everybody should be up in arms. Americans should be up in arms. Documented evidence. U.S. regime change in Venezuela. Latin American nation of Venezuela faces dangerous destabilization with the United States and its allies, having recognized opposition figure Juan Guaido as president and declaring actual Venezuelan president Maduro no longer recognized. Hey, aren't we cool? We get to do whatever the hell we want to do. And too bad for the rest of the world. The protest and counter-protest have reportedly taken to the streets as both sides attempt to seize the psychological and political initiative, according to U.S. Se Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. The impetus for Washington's sudden interest in Venezuela is the suffering of the Venezuelan people. Oh, and that's what we did with, uh, yeah, the suffering of the Syrian people and the suffering of all the people around the world. And you know what? We create the suffer suffering. And then uh, when the government does not bow to our demands, we create a whole lot of suffering in these countries. But we go on here as Americans believing in these unbelievable lies that lead to such profound, like incomprehensible evil. And we know it. We know it somewhere. You know, many of us actually see it very clearly. We acknowledge it. We're upset by it. But most Americans, they want to ignore it. They want to think that they're morally superior to all people around the world when nothing could be further from the truth. Mike Pompeo. The Venezuelan people have suffered long enough under Maduro's disastrous dictatorship. We call on Maduro to step aside in favor of a legitimate leader reflecting the will of the Venezuelan people. Yeah. And think, just think, if that took place here, ah, yes, the legitimate leader, Nancy Pelosi. Well, you Trump supporters would be very upset, wouldn't you? Yes, you sure would be. Washington's motivation is the fact that according to the organization of the Petroleum Petroleum exporting countries. Venezuela has the largest proven oil reserves on earth, more than Saudi Arabia, and accounting for nearly a quarter of all OPEC production. But we care about the Venezuelan people. U.S. doesn't necessarily need this oil in terms of energy, but in terms of maintaining a U.S.-led unipolar international order, Controlling or crippling nations with large amounts of hydrocarbons prevents the emergence of a multipolar world nation. Multipolar world nations across the developing world seek, led by re-emerging global power Russia and a newly emerging global power China, a Venezuelan governed by a stable political order able to produce wealth from its massive oil reserves and dedicated to a multipolar alternative to Washington's current international order is intolerable for Wall Street and Washington. Hence the reason why we have been destabilizing, overthrowing, trying coup attempts in Venezuela, 
We tried several, but Trump is going to get that job done. Yeah. Western media has admitted that U.S. has long meddled in Venezuela's internal affairs. By funding the opposition, you can read all about our infiltration into Venezuela, in particular, that has been ongoing for 20 years. And we brought, not socialism, we brought that country to the state it is in now with food shortages, medicine shortages, the economic downfall of Venezuela is due to American evil and the funding of all of these organizations to infiltrate Venezuela, to bring it down, to bring it under the control of our United States government Your tax dollars create so much suffering around the world. Did you ever think, hey, maybe we should all organize to stop paying taxes because you write out those checks, you are absolutely 100% complicit with all of the destruction that is taking place. Destruction caused by American exceptionalism. USAID. USAID is a, an organization that goes into countries to destroy them. The US government's extensive meddling in Venezuela remains intentionally covert. It's not covert. All you have to do now is just do a little bit of research to find out what we have been doing in that country. But you can look into it and you can see U.S. money, funding organizations, organizations that take the uh, take their um, directives from the United States. U.S. efforts to cripple Venezuelan the Venezuelans, uh, the Venezuelan economy. Uh, look, you know, there's so much, there's so much that I will link to below. But nothing could be more obvious when you got this evil shithead, narcissistic psychopath in the White House who decides for another country who their president is and could we take military action against Venezuela? Assad used chemical weapons against his own. I'm going to bomb Syria. Yeah, we could. Absolutely. There is a lot of very good evidence of our, uh, our the tactics that we have used to bring down Venezuela to its knees so that we could control it in the articles that I will link to below. Yeah, the enemies list. A wolf pack of rogue states. Access of evil. North Korea. Iran. Iraq. We heard that, right? And you're either with us or you're against us. Yeah. It's like we're being led by bullies in high school. And they say these things like, you're either with us or against us. There's a new sheriff in town. 
and we think that we're just hot shit. My God. Well, yeah, John Bolton. And look, I'm sorry, guys. You know, you, you want to support this guy? You, you're not going to look into who he has appointed to lead our energy, uh, our agencies, sorry. And uh, you're not going to look into uh, these neocons that he has brought back into the White House to take over other countries. You're just going to focus on what you want, then you're not about truth. And you're not about change. John Bolton. He has uh, decided three more countries are the access of evil. Cuba, Libya, Syria. Huh. Yeah. It's obvious, and you read these articles, and you, you will, you know, read how uh, unexceptional is the United States, how sick and twisted the United States is. And yes, you cannot separate what our military and government is doing from the American people. So we've got a sick and twisted people in this country. We didn't need, we didn't need to have all of this manifested, this evil. If the American people were adults and responsible and, and actually uh, regarded their freedom as something to protect and regarded the truth as important, they would have fought for it. You know, now it's uh, Bolton, now it's the Troika of tyranny. Cuba, Venezuela, Nicaragua. Nicaragua. <laughs> These tyrants fancy themselves strongmen and revolutionaries, icons and luminaries. In reality, they are clownish, pitiful figures more akin to Larry, Curly, and Moe. Are you kidding me? The Three Stooges of Socialism are true believers, but they worship a false god. Who's your god? Satan? Bolton? Who's your god? You? Satan? <sighs> Look, you know what? It takes an awful long time to do the work necessary to get yourself to a place of uh, living honestly, speaking honestly, uh, and that entails facing your own self most people will not go there, so they'll just carry on how sick and twisted they are. But for those who um, actually do face themselves, it takes years of work, hard work, self-reflection, reevaluating all of those beliefs that you have, and then you know putting into practice new behaviors that are in accordance with uh, uh, some moral principles before you can get to a place where you actually do care instead of just saying, oh, I care about what's going on. And how you live demonstrates something very opposite of what you are saying. It takes years. The American people are in a condition where they clearly are incapable of standing up, standing ground, standing up against the evil that is taking place. So we're going to see more and more of our government and these sick, twisted bastards, including this guy, wreak so much havoc. Oh, right. And that havoc has come home to roost upon the American people. It's going to continue. But hey, the wall, right? The wall is the important thing. All links are below.